Okay, it was only a few hours ago when I finished recording a video about the earthquake here in Taiwan and showing the science progress around the world and now we've got all this happening. I don't know if this is a continuation of that event there's this idea of this cascade of plate movements but there's a 6.7 in Russia a couple of hours after this one in Taiwan and this is much bigger and it also is a global plate movement event, worldwide wobble, whatever you like to call it. Okay. It's definitely something significant going on at the moment, so I hope this is not the beginning of something larger. It's just a uh, it's been relatively quiet for earthquakes for a long time. Okay, so I just sort of document this because when the update again in a couple of hours, I'm sure well, either these will be blacker or these things will move off and they'll be lost. There's nice good access to the original data. We can't reproduce this sort of stuff. Mexico. Okay. I'll do a refresh in a couple of hours. Okay, let's do a refresh and this is what the science graph looks like right now. This is uh, February 26 at 16.20 p.m. UTC time, or oh, that's the time of the uh, update, the latest update from the USGS seismographs for the list service. As you can see, nothing has actually happened since that earthquake, or no significant movements have happened since that earthquake in Russia. Uh, we've got the, the Taiwan one here, and then a couple hours later the Russian one. Taiwan, Russia. This is across the world. The only quiet place would appear to be Kiribati. Okay, this is what it looked like in uh, Picture Pulaski, Russia. I looked at that one before. Okay, you can see the Taiwan quake up here and here. And then it was actually one hour, two hours, or well, three hours after that. Okay. So this is not normal. I mean, we do get these sort of events every now and then, but normally earthquakes don't look like this. Um, it's just these global sort of phenomena that happens. I'm not sure if this has been going on for years and years and years, but uh, it's been going on for at least 18 months. Every now and then, some of the larger earthquakes show up everywhere with this continuous movement all around the world. But then you have other large earthquakes which don't do this at all. So there's definitely two different kinds of earthquakes. Some that do this and some that don't. So the time on earthquake today was at 2.34 or 2.35 a.m. UTC time. And the one in Russia, which is just northwest of Taiwan actually, it's a long way northwest, but it's still on the same side of the globe, was at 6.17 a.m. UTC time. So of course I'm wondering, where is the moon at this time? Was there a conjunction, an alignment? So if we look at the moon from the perspective of the Earth, it's somewhere coming up to Jupiter, we're a day away from Jupiter alignment, uh, we just passed Venus, you don't, wouldn't get an earthquake between the Earth, Moon and Venus, but you would with Jupiter, but it's too early for that. So let's have a look at the other direction. Okay, so we checked the time on the Russian earthquake, that was at uh, 6.17 UTC. Let's have a look. As you can see, the epicenter for the Russian quake is in sight of the Moon now. We're looking at the Earth from the perspective of the Moon. Uh, here's Taipei, here's uh, the epicenter for the previous quake about four hours earlier. So I think I said three hours before, but it's actually about four hours. Okay, so what else have we got? If we zoom out a bit, we'll see. There's the Moon. It's Saturn. We're coming up to an alignment with Saturn. We're actually within uh, less than 12 hours of an alignment with Saturn, a conjunction, if you like. Uh, that seems to be significant, and that actually has happened in the end of last year as well. We had the lines with Saturn, which we had earthquakes on. Um, so, 
I think we've got to consider Saturn as a possible uh, discharge object for the Earth Moon when we're charged. And are we charging? Well, I think we might be, and I'll tell you why. Okay, I apologize, but unless you were following my videos from last year, much of this isn't going to make much sense. But in the clock experiment, based on that uh, Associated Press news story in Yahoo News that was subsequently deleted, talking about the clock times being wrong towards the end of the year, well, in my clock experiment, because I was checking clocks against the internet server time and ultimately clocks against clocks, uh, the only significant event that really, I think, occurred was the one that happened between September 1st and September 3rd, where the clocks jumped up, the fast clock went fast, the slow clock went slow, slower, and um, then they returned pretty much back to normal by the, I think it was the 3rd, 4th, on the 4th they were back to normal. But most of this jump actually happened in less than 12 hours. Okay, this is a every point on this chart is actually 24 hours, but the majority of the jump actually occurred within 12 hours, uh, early on the second September 2nd. What I found out or noticed later on is something even more unusual about that. While constructing one of these crazy alignment charts, uh, looking down on the solar system and plotting uh, earthquakes and moon positions and minimums and change in sea levels and whatever else as well as clock times okay the clock minimum occurred when the earth was here this is about September 2nd here's the Sun and in that direction over there that line there if this was 18 months earlier the earth was actually located here and that is for the Chilean earthquake on February 27 2010 it's almost a perfect match for that earthquake. According to the USGS, that earthquake was a 8.8. .8. The magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake in Chile on February 27, 2010 occurred just before the Alanin alignment. Alanin was a long period comet. The sun provided the energy that was flowing to Alanin and the earth was passing through that flow of energy. We charged. This is what I'm talking about when I say we were charging. We were charging then, we are coming up to the Sun-Jupiter alignment, which may or may not have been significant, but it was also the Moon-Jupiter alignment. And on as we approached the Moon-Jupiter alignment, we discharged. And I think Jupiter discharges, or big earthquakes on Jupiter alignments, actually tend to happen in the Southern Hemisphere. I go as far as to say that, and Northern Hemisphere is for the Pleiades, Orion discharges. Okay, so let's go to Celestia and look at the Earth from the perspective of the Sun. This is the position of the Earth at that time on February 27, 2010. Now on September 2nd, 2011, looking from the perspective of the Earth towards the Sun, this is the position of the Sun in the sky. It's very, very close to that position of the Earth relative to the Sun on February 27, 2010. It's so close, it seems to be beyond coincidence, especially considering this is the only anomaly really significant anomaly I found uh, in the whole of that clock time experiment and it's just really bizarre that it should fall on that alignment there. So for the Russian earthquake at 6.17 UTC time looking from the perspective of the Sun this is where the Earth was very close to the alignment where we had the clock anomaly which I believe would be about here. So if we fast forward the time find that it should become close to that alignment towards the end of February 28 getting close to perhaps midnight and or early on February 29 early in the morning UTC time and if there is an object out there that could cause the earth to be charged with energy flowing from the Sun it's not the alignment between the earth Sun and this object it's actually the alignment between the Earth, Moon, and something like the Pleiades. The Earth, Moon, Pleiades alignment. Let's go have a look and see when that occurs. So, 3 a.m., around 3 a.m. UTC time, is probably the middle of the range where this would occur, but perhaps a bit before that. And, as I was saying, Pleiades, we're looking at Northern Hemisphere. 
Okay, but before that we've of course got the Jupiter alignment, and that's coming up in about I think it's about ten hours from now, and that would be Southern Hemisphere. So it would be interesting to see if anything happens on the Jupiter alignment in about ten hours. That would be about say four a.m. February twenty-seven UTC time, and then later on when the moon comes round to align with the Pleiades at the same time as we are perhaps in this other alignment with another object the Sun, Earth and a comet-like object which hasn't been named okay let's hope not but anyway look out for any events happening over the next 12 hours I guess and then you have a clue of what might be coming up on the 29th and if you got the chance start doing the clock experiment uh, checking your times against uh, every data against two clocks or a clock against an internet server time or a clock against a cell phone time and see if there's any movement um, out of the ordinary and it normally be within a 24 hour period or this is, that seems what happens there's a period of 12 hours where the clocks seem to jump and then they seem to return so that's what I'm really expecting is a clock time anomaly but perhaps there's going to be an earthquake with it this time as well and as far as the March 22nd prediction that everyone's making the 188 189 day cycle uh, my take on that nothing's gonna happen sorry it's uh, February 29 is the date to look out for okay thank you for watching